Welcome, everyone. My name is Jeff Ader, and I'm the Director of Corporate Insights and Programs here at Points of Light. We have a very exciting and full agenda today. And before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that we will share the recording and slides after the webinar. Um, I've also put a link in the chat to the full uh, report, the new Small Business Social Impact Research that we're excited to walk through today. Uh, please feel free to use the chat or the Zoom Q&A feature for questions. We'll do our best to answer um, all of them at the end of today's session um, that we'll certainly try and follow up via email and respond to any unanswered ones if we are running tight on time. So as many on this call hopefully know, Points of Light is focused on helping individuals, nonprofits, and companies become more civically engaged and drive social impact in their communities and organizations. While much of the public spotlight is on larger companies for their philanthropic and socially driven activities, time and time again, we see some of the most inspiring and impactful work being carried out by small businesses at the local level. Whether with honorees of our local Civic 50 programs or through the amazing work of our affiliate network organizations and the small businesses they are engaging in communities across the country. Despite all this, their impact and needs are often less understood and often overlooked, which brings us here today to learn more about this new area of small business research for points of light and the sector. We're excited to have with us, Derek Feldman, uh, Managing Director of ISG Research Advisors, who conducted this research Walk us through the key findings and insights, and also Tasha Helm, Senior Director of Global Corporate Citizenship at Fiserv, bring to life this research and sharing how they are supporting and helping unlock the full social and economic potential of small businesses. Before we jump into today's session, though, I'd like to introduce and welcome on camera Points of Light Interim President and CEO, Diane Quest, to kick us off and help set the stage for these two speakers. Thank you so much, Jeff. Good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Before we dive into the content, I wanted to take just a moment to thank Pfizer for investing in this research. It's a great way to show how large companies can invest and highlight small businesses. I'd also like to thank Derek and Influence SG for their continued partnership on all of our civic engagement research. Since we released this report a few weeks ago, we've actually heard from a variety of folks in different sectors who say, this research feels like it begins, just begins, to fill a gap in community and civic engagement research. While research often focuses on individuals and large companies, this project really recognizes the role small business plays every day in communities. They are a critical part of the social impact system. While our global civic engagement research last year found that 80% of people expect companies to speak out on a public issue, this research actually found that 52% of the public agreed at some level on the need for small business owners to take a public stand. So we're seeing less overall societal pressure for these companies, one of many interesting findings in the research. And I won't give away those details, which Derek will go through, but the headline is that small businesses are an untapped resource. So we're excited for this research to inform how both nonprofits and larger companies can uplift and partner with small business and I hope you take away one or more data points that will inform your work. And please, please share it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks, Diane. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce and welcome on camera Tasha Helm. Uh, Tasha Helm is the Senior Director of Global Corporate Citizenship at Pfizer, where she currently manages philanthropic, strategic, and operational initiatives, including the management of their nearly $50 million back to business program. She brings more than 25 years of experience within the financial and e-commerce sectors. And I believe she is also a small business entrepreneur herself. So welcome Tasha and would just like to echo Diane's thank you for Pfizer's investment in making this research possible and available to the sector. So with that, Tasha, I'll uh, turn it over to you and pull up the slides. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Diane, uh, for having us. Uh, we're happy to be here today. Um, and I, you know, as we get started, just for point of context, we can see the name Pfizer sometimes when we're pronouncing it and we're and 
have what we aspire to do. Um, Jeff, if you want to advance to the next slide. Um, this will actually show our company culture, our aspirations, our values, and our purpose. And really, Pfizer's purpose is to move money and information in a way that moves the world. So as a global leader, we are a global uh, company in the payment and financial uh, technology sector, also known as FinTech. Pfizer helps clients achieve best-in-class results through a commitment to innovation and excellence. Uh, these areas include account processing, digital banking solutions, card issuer, processing, network services, uh, payments, e-commerce, and then a merchant acquiring. Um, I actually sit within the company of uh, corporate citizenship, also uh, referred to as corporate social responsibility. So within this sector, we do have many, um, many diverse I would say initiatives in all of these areas that I just named that we're focused on and committed to within Pfizer, not only assist larger uh, enterprise type organizations, but a real focus on small to medium businesses. All right, Jeff, if we can go into, uh, and talked a little bit about corporate citizenship, citizenship, excuse me, and what we do. And the Office of Corporate Citizenship at Pfizer really uh, enhances the way that associates uh, engage and interact across the enterprise. And we also understand as, as a large enterprise and organization that we can do well by doing good as well. So we have many initiatives for our associates to participate in as it relates to small business. And we'll talk a little bit about our Back to Business initiative and when we launched that and uh, why it launched. But we do have a fundamental commitment uh, to doing well by our, not only our associates, but clients, suppliers uh, within our local community, and then creating really a virtuous cycle and shared value throughout the community. Uh, and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around how can a large enterprise versus small, uh, medium-sized businesses, what type of commitments are we making throughout the community? You can see here that we have a focus area for uh, those four quadrants. Uh, we are focused on associate engagement and well-being, diversity, inclusion, financial literacy and inclusion, and also sustainability. And we engage with our community partners, such as Points of Light, to actually uh, activate on each one of these uh, uh, initiatives within our corporate social responsibility. Uh, these are strategic initiatives for the company. I am really proud to say that, uh, you know, it has not been from a performative uh, standpoint, but it really is actually intertwined into the culture uh, of the company. And so we have all hands on deck, if you will, an initiative for associates to participate with small business. We can go to the next slide. Really, our our you know, uh, commitment to excellence is here that's based on um, our CEO, Frank Bizignano, and then how we actually engage uh, and create exposure, access, and opportunity for everyone. Again, this is not just for associates, those of us that sit within the walls of FISER, but who our partners are within the community. I think that sometimes, you know, we think about how we're engaging throughout the community, and believe it or not, universities, colleges, um, small business development centers. We have national organizations. We are um, have a large military community presence. We actually have a division within the company that is geared towards uh, military and military uh, spouse. So, um, you know, just very proud on the commitments um, moving those forward. And then also, as you can see, our back to business uh, programming, and that's coupled with supplier diversity. Um, largely, we think about just large companies being able to interact within a supplier diversity realm, but even understand how do you get certified uh, through these organizations and what organizations are offering these opportunities for small business owners to uh, make yourself you know, more visible and viable through, um, throughout the community. So um, our real commitment to our community organizations, really, we are there uh, as from a supportive standpoint. We have positioned ourselves within communities to really be leveraged and just be a vessel within the community, a beacon of light. Uh, we understand and we'll get into 
uh, during COVID, how small businesses were impacted um, later through, throughout the slides and the importance of small businesses uh, within our community. Next slide, please. All right, so all about back to business and this is kind of the leader slide, we can move into the, to the next slide uh, around back to business. Um, you'll see here, and I won't read through the entire slide, but essentially our back to business is our commitment. It's a multi-pronged initiative where we invest in small business um, into that ecosystem to really strengthen businesses. And we connect uh, our small businesses through back to business with vital education. Those are topics that are instrumental to small to medium businesses, also through technology our Clover, um, Clover solution, if you will, is our small business uh, solution. We also have coaching or SME subject matter expert opportunities that we partner with our throughout the community for it could be from speaking engagements to um, needing to understand in, uh, for a specific topic, can we facilitate um, within you know, the topic, the need for uh, small to medium businesses. Also, and that's through community engagement as well and through capital. So the capital piece is really the non-dilutive funding piece for small to medium businesses. And that is by way of grant. Um, so of you may have heard, or if you go out onto Fiserv.com, you'll see uh, back to business grant. Uh, we recently just opened and closed, uh, relaunched in Atlanta, uh, Georgia, a million dollar initiative for small to medium businesses. And just to put into perspective, because we launched this initiative in 2020, and this was really on the heels of the social unrest. So speaking of social impact, you know, whether or not it's through diversity, equity, inclusion, um, through a, a challenge that the community may have, that Diane mentioned that a small business or a business uh, has a solution for or also through um, these initiatives that large organizations make commitments to. So since 2020, you really have more than 1,600 and it's more in the tune of 1,700 small diverse owned businesses across the United States as well as the UK who received um, grants and wraparound support uh, from Fiserv as well as through our community partnerships. So with small businesses, as many of you know, being revered as really the heartbeat is what I say um, of many communities. We believe that they're just not in the neighborhood, but they are the neighborhood. And I give the example of growing up, uh, there was a small business owner that lived next door to my grandparents. And they had, I would say like a convenience store or a commodity store. And to put into perspective, the social impact really, um, which is another way of looking at it for a community that may not have robust transportation um, services outside of public transportation services, we have really have many of these small businesses that we may refer to as mom and pop shops sometimes that really are the heartbeat um, of the community uh, where you can go and pick up small commodity items um, from these locations. So um, with that said, our uh, CEO, Frank Vizignano, signed a pledge to essentially move forward together. And again, that was in direct response to the social unrest that erupted across our nation in 2020. So the back to business program really was at the forefront and really becoming the um, part of a commitment and a pledge. Initially that pledge was $10 million and we soon saw the, the need within the communities and the actual investment was increased to $50 million. And that's what uh, Jeff was referring to at the, at the top of the call. You can go to the next slide, please. And here you'll see just a you know high level overview of some of those commitments and accomplishments. Um, we have had an iteration of the program and it really started out with kind of like a KLO, keep the lights on. There were many needs. We know that from a diverse business standpoint that um, there were diverse businesses specifically within the black community that really had a 40% um, loss of footprint um, as small business owners. Now, since then, we have seen the increase of small businesses uh, develop. So out of a crisis became, you know, silver linings and also just the increase as well in women-owned businesses, uh, which 
has been great to see those numbers um, tick up. But from a Pfizer internal standpoint, uh, patronizing and really supporting small businesses, uh, there has been an evolution. So outside of the grants and opening up a portal for small businesses to apply, we began to uh, seek out through our employee resource groups, uh, we having marketplaces, inviting businesses, and then also um, coming up with pop-ups. And so that really would be small businesses that have products or services where we can purchase those products or services and or have food on site, uh, which is not only uh, helps you know, the small business and the community, but also engagement within the organization. All right, you can go to the next slide, please. And we have examples here of, you know, just the reach within the community um, through some of our bank partners. As I stated, we're a fintech company, so that could be anywhere from banking solutions to um, traditional merchant solutions to all of the supporting divisions within the organization. Uh, this is just an example of when we opened in May and we try to align with Awareness Month so we're cognizant of uh, what is taking place, not only locally, regionally, but globally as well. Um, May was in support of Asian American Pacific Islander Month. And within that month, we um, actually were in position to provide grants to uh, three you know, well-deserved uh, businesses within Hawaii, which was you know, really fun to uh, kind of help organize and participate and work with the banks. And so you can see some of the information there. The grants uh, primarily are, you know, in the amount of $10,000 for um, small businesses, which help in many aspects. Uh, one one um, area that we see for small businesses to really uh, kind of look at is uh, making sure that you have a website, making sure that you're visible. And, and social media is great because you want to amplify um, your footprint through whichever medium you can, but really, you know, having a website. Uh, so this money has been contributed to websites, additional products, services, et cetera. So it went from, again, keep the lights on to now looking forward with um, product expansion. And it could be from the standpoint of scaling that could be in uh, resources within or actually uh, scaling and expanding your product. We can move to the next slide. These are just some of you know, the testimonials and that was really on the uh, heels of what kicked off in Hawaii as far as those grants were concerned and how the grants actually assisted the small business. So when we talk about social impact, um, really the question becomes, that's great that you may have an initiative. Um, that's awesome that you're providing grants and maybe wraparound services. But what is the real impact um, in the community? And you can see some of the quotes here. Um, as an example, the grant will allow us to continue to manufacture our gourmet chocolates and at Mochi using only the freshest local ingredients. So for those that may not want to outsource, may want to try to stay local, support local um, type of theme, all of the grant recipients were um, expressing how the grant really um, assisted them when they were actually in need the most, which is um, great to be able to provide that assistance. Next slide, please. Again, this is just another example of support throughout the community uh, in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. This is an example of an all women owned, a small diverse marketplace where we actually brought um, women owned businesses into Pfizer and then associates had the opportunity to go and visit each uh, business and purchase items. Next slide, please. So a lot of the uh, proceeding slides will be of examples of marketplaces uh, in honor and really support of Juneteenth. Uh, we had a marketplace in Atlanta at Rice, which is the Russell Innovation Center for Entrepreneurship, uh, celebrating Juneteenth and also launching the uh, portal for the $1 million initiative. And so you'll see examples of businesses um, here that we have supported. Everyone received uh, their five-star orange bag and could go around to each business and um, 
actually uh, pick up products. And that is because, again, wasn't one single uh, $10,000 grant, but Pfizer purchased products uh, from each one of the businesses that were on site. And then that allowed for anyone who attended the event to, um, to pick up the, the products. Next slide, please. And this is an example of the pop-ups that I was speaking about um, in June in support of Pride, as well as um, Juneteenth. A lot of these businesses um, are either diverse owned um, in any aspect. It could be uh, across designations when we talk about diverse owned. And so these are the businesses that we supported across the month of June from a pop-up standpoint. So these are all examples of um, how you know, we can really uh, participate in, in the change that needs to take place from a small business standpoint. Uh, another example of pop-ups, uh, this was for Pride in support of Pride and all of the pop-ups uh, that took place during uh, the month of June across a number of states uh, that we actually have sites in. Thank you, and next slide please. And this should be one of our final, uh, as we mentioned, uh, hiring our heroes and really supporting our military um, and veteran spouses as well as um, associates. We participate and support veteran owned businesses as well. This is an example um, from the congressional uh, impact reception that took place. And then also uh, gift bags were provided that supported military uh, veteran owned businesses. Um, FISERV during this event introduced a mill spouse, which is military spouse, uh, entrepreneur of the year uh, award. And we participated with moderating that panel uh, during the month of May. And next slide, please. All right. Um, another example of, and these are just all different ideas. This is what FISERV. Um, has participated in with the AACC uh, NJ, which is the African American uh, Chamber of Commerce in New Jersey. Uh, we did participate in their Black Business Expo. That was all businesses that were um, Black-owned businesses that participated in the expo and received um, received back to business grants during that time. Next slide, please. So, how do we know that we're uh, making, you know, impact. And, you know, the definition really of social impact is what, you know, a significant positive change that addresses a pressing social challenge. And we know during COVID that there were all kinds of social challenges um, that took place. But Fiserv, at, at Fiserv, we really view and support small business as a vital engine uh, to our communities. And that's both locally and globally. So, we do offer um, not only just the breadth, but the, the depth for business with Clover Technology at the Center of Small Business Solutions. Um, we're here to assist from an SME standpoint. And then in particular, you know, there's digital needs and banking solutions that small businesses uh, allow small businesses really to, in particular, to operate as well as differentiate themselves across various verticals and markets. And so we could not do this again without our partners and others who focused really on instigating that same change within the small business ecosystem. And you can see here, as an example, um, we participated in a 2023 survey. The feedback that we received is really how we're measuring ourselves and the vitality of the um, program, the back to business program. So with more than 1600 grant recipients surveyed, and um, you know, we were pleasantly surprised um, 100% for 100% of those that were um, surveyed to say that the grant positively helped their business um, is an excellent response. And then how businesses really, um, how back to business is helping business owners. Um, you can see that 41% to avoid closing, you know, not to say that there's an offset there, but with 40% of black owned businesses losing their footprint, it's good to see that 41% were able to hold on, 17% um, were able to keep staff and avoid layoffs, and then 16% incre increased their growth in sales. So that's what I was um, referring to as far as uh, mentioning scaling 
at that time. Um, and then also 96%, we're happy to say that 96% of those businesses that we did survey are still in business. And then 52% said um, access to funding basically remains a challenge. So we know that there are still um, opportunities within uh, the funding aspect. And if we move to the next slide, that's more of the results of the survey and the top five ways that the grant funds were used. I won't read through um, each one of those, but you know, the top one obviously was to pay staff. And then 70% said that their business prospects look good um, to excellent compared in 2022, which is um, a great stat to actually uh, see. And next slide, please. So how is Fiserv actually vying just from a, a corporate social uh, responsibility standpoint? We offer a uh, CSR report that is available to anyone uh, who wants to um, view the changes and the impact that we're making uh, in the community to leverage some of those and maybe incorporate some of those ideas into your own um, business. That report is uh, free for anyone to download. If you visit Fiserv.com, if you type in corporate social responsibility report, um, you will be able to see it there. And I, I'm going to yield the floor back to Jeff, but before I do, I just want to advise um, for anyone who you know, wants to really understand the impact of small businesses, you know, there's 30.2 million and these numbers will change right daily, but 30.2 million small businesses and these are US stats. And from an employed standpoint, small businesses employ 47.1%. So almost in the last numbers that I saw really were 48%. Um, that's 60 million plus Americans. So when we think about how important is my small business? What impact am I really uh, making? Just understand that you are making an impact from a gross domestic product standpoint. You're making an impoint, uh, uh, impact into a, a GNP standpoint, which is gross national product. And 99.9% .9 of businesses are small businesses. Um, so that is you know, one data point to be proud of. The, the gross domestic product from a dollar standpoint is in the trillions. And um, really, uh, from a market, you know, location standpoint, again, it's not just local, regional, but global. And uh, it's something that we should really be proud of. Um, how can you, how can you uh, actually contribute to uh, social impact? And I'll leave just one example. I know we must move on. But one example that I would leave is, and I think about, you know, school is starting in most communities, you know, elementary schools are collecting products. Um, I would say that, you know, you can set up a basket, you can collect products from glue to um, tissue, to hand sanitizer, to crayons, pencils. Schools need these things. And it may seem like something that's small, but that small, you know, good deed returns into, you know, a large impact just within the community. And actually, you know, that could be your pathway into other uh, community opportunities. So again, um, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Points of Light, for having me. And uh, Diane, thank you for your kind words. And I'll yield the floor back to Jeff. Thank you, Tasha. Uh, very inspiring to hear the many ways Fiserv has leveraged their assets to really empower small businesses to have an even greater impact in their community and loved how it has not only aligned with your business strategy, but also engaged your employees and associates, um, especially through your employee resource groups. So uh, with that, I'm now honored and introduced, uh, honored to welcome uh, Derek Feldman on camera. Derek is an internationally recognized researcher, uh, author, advisor on social issues, movements, and consumer public action. He is the Managing Director of ISG Research Advisors, the firm that led this work and really translated our kind of pie in the sky idea of about better understanding the role of small business and community into a real study that could be fielded and analyzed and contributed to the, the social impact research sector. Derek is also the Managing Director of the Ad Council Research Institute, where he oversees public research on studies pressing um, research studies on pressing issues affecting Americans and is a visiting research fellow and teacher 
uh, at the Skoll Center's Impact Lab at Oxford, U Oxford University's Sahid Business School. So, Derek, I will let you take it away. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jeff. Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. I know we've got about a half hour left together. So I'm going to be walking through some really the key highlights from the study. And of course, I know Jeff and team have shared with you the, the report. And as always, if we don't get to any of the questions or if we're not, uh, some of the things that you'd be thinking about, I, feel free to email and communicate with the Points of Light team, and they will make sure that uh, that comes over to me, and I'm happy to answer. So this has been an incredible research opportunity because, as Diane mentioned, and as so many others here have already talked about, you know, much of the data around consumer or public perceptions and attitudes or knowledge about social impact and companies tends to immediately move in towards large companies. And so the intent here and the objective was to really focus on small businesses, small business owners, and looking at how those entities within the larger ecosystem of social change from a corporate perspective is making a difference in the eyes of the consumer. And so that is how we really progressed the, through the design of the study. And also as we were looking at it through the analytical side too. So I must mention a couple key things because you kind of keep this framing in the back of your mind as we walk through some of the data points together. First and foremost, when we define small businesses, it reflects a business that has less than 500 employees overall. And one of the things that we did, as I'll talk about soon here, is limit the number of sole proprietors in that too as well. The second part of this is, is that when we think about civic engagement, participation, uh, you know, we have been working with points of light on data and insights around the civic circle, as you see on the screen right now, the, the, com the, the opportunities and the ecosystem around change that every individual has uh, to their disposal. And so we'll be talking about sort of the civic circle environments, especially around things like purchasing power and voice voting, listening and learning, and then what happens in the workplace. So let's quickly get into methodology. We fielded an online quant study overall. And as you can see here on the screen, just some of the demographic environments for you to take a look at. I just want to call your attention to a few key things. First and foremost is that we had roughly around 2,700 individuals participate in the study. Um, in addition to that, we not only looked at the general consumer public's perceptions and attitudes, but we wanted to hear from sort of a 360, 180 environment, the, the uh, viewpoints of small business owners themselves. So we had a sample of about 332 small business owners. We ensured that we limited the number of sole proprietors to about a third of that, because we wanted to make sure we had a nice mix of composition of owners that had various levels of employees beyond it too, because there are a lot of small business owners, um, sole proprietors in the country. So I'm going to break this down into three key finding sections. And as we go through here, <laughs> again, feel free to put those questions into the chat or the Q&A. First and foremost, uh, it should be said that an overarching trend is, is that the general American consumer public, when they think about small business owners, they have really, really high perceptions of positivity around their existing working communities. They kind of exceed the public's expectations and perceptions as well, versus when we start to break it out of large companies or anything else. And this is a key finding because we start to now look at how we can benchmark attitudes and perceptions over time as it relates to small businesses and active involvement in social issues. So on the screen right now, uh, you're going to see a piece around taking a stand, which is often a piece right now that is always talked about, and especially from the corporate perspective, but what about small businesses? And what we heard both from owners themselves, which is reflective in the orange bars on both graphs, but also from the consumer public is they both feel, business owners and the public, that small businesses should be taking public stands when it comes to issues where they live in their communities and also some other issues outside. So nationwide, state, beyond those local issues too as well. Now we do have a category of sort of in the movable middle, what we call sort of neither agree or disagree, but those are always gonna be situational as it turns and, uh, and comes into effect based upon locales uh, and issues as they come up. Now I'm gonna break it down a few times throughout our presentation about race 
race and ethnicity. And so what you're going to see on the screen right now are just a few variances or shifts in how that data looks when I look at it from a demographical standpoint. Just a few pieces to keep in mind that I thought I would I would uh, sort of point out is that men were actually stronger than women that felt that small business owners should take a public stand. And our Black African American sample within the larger sample overall really felt the same or more strongly than other ethnicities around the same topic that they should obviously be engaged to as well. So just some interesting call outs. We call those out in the report too as well for you to take a glance at. When we asked small business owners themselves, we said, okay, let's take a look at the civic circle. Uh, you know, what do you think? We didn't necessarily say this is the civic circle, but we gave them all kinds of scenarios and environments where they could tell us what actions uh, they believe from their perspective are the most influential, not the consumer public. And as you see it right here, is, is that most of them feel utilizing their platforms, utilizing their voice can go a long way. So speaking out, or providing resources when necessary, we're really, really towards the top. But much of this is related to either financial contributions, but really using their voice and platform overall, which is a great opportunity for any of you who work with small businesses to engage with them. Now, we did ask the public, can you recall the last time you were involved, took action because of a small business? And much of that was related to donations, donations of goods, financial contributions, all of those things. And by far, you should know, and we have a section about point of sale donations later on, is, is that this has been sort of the easiest entry point for most of the small business owners in our study to tell us how they were engaging in social issues. Now, while they see taking a stand is really important, this is the space and place where they have actually been sort of doing the implementation side of it as well. Of course, some interesting breakdowns by race and ethnicity. Again, I just want to point out a few key things here. You'll see that at the bottom of the screen. And that is actually men were almost double than women. This is this level of significance around who applied for it to jobs because of small businesses. Um, and then the other thing, too, is, is that white respondents, non-white, non-Hispanic whites, were actually um, ranked about 12% higher than others in saying they took no action as the suggestion of a small business owner. Just interesting flip in that, too. Now, what is interesting is, is that small business owners believe, from their perspective, that much of the participation comes out of volunteerism that they've been a part of, or the, the ways in which that they've been you know, designing or developing initiatives, either with partners and other things. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind too, as well. But additionally, I would just note is that most small business owners significantly surpass the public and sort of donating professional services. They feel that this is another kind of contribution that they're making and a really important one. So, Easy entry point is usually in the point of sale side for small business owners. It's easy and tangible, but they're using their voice and platform desired. And then in addition to that, they see that from their perspective, that while they do provide small business to our donation opportunities, that much of it is uh, that they see in participation relates to the volunteer work that happens out of the community in which they're a participant to as well. Now, one of the things too that I just wanted to reinforce is around that sort of civic circle element around voting. This was a very interesting thing. We brought this out a little bit further to try to understand. I mean, we are going into an election years uh, ahead. And I just thought I'd carry this into this conversation is, is that actually small business owners see themselves along with the public uh, encouraging voting participation as part of that civic circle. And in fact, a 10% higher by business owners themselves. So for any of you working in the civic engagement, voting, get out the vote environments, this is something that's slight encouraging as well as we lead into the coming year with the election. So I would, uh, I'm gonna kind of quickly move into this and get into our second finding area, but I just wanna reinforce that volunteerism is a high element. Um, you know, it, it is as high as some of the other ones, but keep in mind the desired state, right? So you're always going to have what they think where they can be most influential versus what they're actually doing. So I don't wanna sort of say that volunteerism isn't as high, it's actually as high as the others. We had some of the other more desired states about using their platform or pro professional services were also pretty high on that list. So, um, and I thought it was quite interesting when we got into a line of inquiry here, 
around, okay, small business owners, tell us where you think the biggest challenges are to really getting involved, right? Let's look at it in the reverse. And what we heard is, is just knowledge. You know, they want and need to understand other ways to be involved. They're just unsure how, right? So we talked about the easiest things are kind of the point of sale and some of those other unique opportunities. But there, as we know, with the Civic Circle, there's so many other things that could actually happen. Um, and there's sort of this assurance and confidence piece that I that I would mention, which is, you know, they're just not sure where they could really lend a hand or help, and it makes a difference in a way. So I think that those are two elements, if you as an organization are working with small businesses to really help reassure and, and provide that confidence and environment. I, I also thought it would be interesting to share with you, as you see on the bottom here, most small business owners, especially beyond the sole proprietor area, you know, they, they struggle with this area when it comes to engaging middle management. They really feel that their middle managers or even some of the some of the other sort of employees at that level just don't really have an understanding of the necessity for this kind of involvement and or they're sort of indifferent, right? So I think that if you're an organization working with them, this is where there's some great opportunities to maybe go in and help inform as well. So, so just some key highlights from the small business owner's perspective. All right, so that kind of leads us into our next section. And like I said, feel free to start putting in some of those questions. We'll get to it in about 10 minutes or so. Um, the second one is around purchasing motivations. So what we wanted to do in this area in lines of inquiry uh, is to look at, okay, are you purchasing things from small businesses? That's important to know first. But secondly, what goes into that? Does social issue involvement influence those purchasing decisions? Are you shopping locally because you trust them? Where does that really lend itself? And because as we know in the civic circle, purchasing behavior is a form of social issue engagement, right? Supporting a small business, intentionality when it comes to where you purchase things, those are all uh, uh, actions one takes, this is a key piece to really break down. And we wanted to make sure that we understood that. So we first want to look at, as I mentioned, are they actually purchasing goods and products and services from small businesses? And the vast majority are, as we hear, and this compares with other national studies too as well. So this is a point of comparison that we wanted to, to really look at. I, I, I shared with you a little bit of the demographic breakdown for you, just so that if you had a chance to see it, of course, the main report's got everything else in there as well. But one of the top reasons overall is they trust them and they know them. They know these small business owners. They know that entity that's been around. Um, they, can, they know their contributions, loyalty, and support within the community. And that all, all really contributes to a positive influence of many towards purchasing goods from them as well and reasons for shopping too. So they trust that owner. And really what we started to discover is, is that small business owners are trusted messengers because they're already trusted when it comes to those purchasing environments. So there's key ways as trusted messengers, especially if you're working with them and you know this kind of relates to the desired area, right? Using platform, using their voice, on social issues is something they feel that they could do. This is an area really to explore in a place of opportunity. Now, I, I did wanna just point out just some small notable differences just on purchasing intent and different reasons that we have this in the report if you wanna look at, but know that we have it broken down by race too. So here, what you see right now is what I would call the sort of wheel of influence when it comes to your motivations for purchasing from small businesses. We did lots of different exercises, question protocols to allow us to try to get down to really some major fundamental areas, right? So that would be price, environment or sustainability, um, employees, personal needs versus desires of products, and then it's kind of sort of the social responsibility or social issue engagement. And so what you see on the screen right now is the aggregate response from the total general consumer public, the 2,700 that were a part of this. And as you go from the sort of top right green quarter area, I'm going to go all the way around for you. So this is a key piece is that we have to understand, and most often studies 
fail to look at all the other influences that kind of go into things, especially when it comes to purchasing intent. We, we have a, another body of work we work on where we're constantly asking various questions around, well, what if this product was 50 cents cheaper, but they do really good social issue work, which I'm going to show you in a minute to see how that really relates, is, is that we cannot ignore the, the areas of price or inflation or all the other kind of economics. But we want to understand, right, where the social issue or the environment or their treatment of employees, where does that sort of begin? And what we have to recognize is, is that it's not necessarily one over the other. And that's important from a research perspective to reiterate, because it is more like it's an influence of others. Social issue engagement, as you can see here, is about a 30% environment, civic engagement, participatory. It's not the dominant one, but it's a significant part of the influence and motivation to get involved. And so price is always going to be, a, you're going to have price sensitive consumers, but reinforcing around things related to social issue or civic engagement involvement is key. And quite honestly, what they're known for in the community, right? So things like how they're treating their employees with fair wages and sort of that brand perception and attitude, just broadly speaking, where the business is. Now, I wanted to break that wheel of motivation down all the way into the different racial and demographic profile here. So there's some interesting pieces here, but I just want to point out one major sort of I would say binding or insight. And that's pretty much among all ethnicities and race, non-Hispanic white people were more motivated by price um, than the social issue support areas. So just something to note. Again, full breakdown that's in the report there too. I mentioned earlier that part of the things we love to do here is to try to test different scenarios. We're gonna put them into a situation where they're gonna be forced to buy something, okay? And they want it. So we have to kind of get past that uh, and, and say, okay, I've got a product in for you to buy that you want. And there's different price points. And at every different price point, there's various areas of social issue and civic engagement. Um, would you do one or the other based upon these scenarios? And what we learned is, and not surprising, price always you know, oversees the rest of these. But what is interesting, too, is, is that some of them would pay um, sort of to receive more information about causes and their involvement and or even, you know, just to learn more, or even support a cause through some of these sort of product integrations and campaign efforts overall. Your big takeaway here is, is that we're always going to have consumers that are price sensitive to things. We're going to have our socially conscious consumers, but this is a, a route of many in which that the company can really use their platform. So I encourage that, especially as you engage with small businesses and their owners. So um, I, I wanna to mention too, that the consumer public looks at small business support. Um, again, there's a high perception and there's an interesting piece around here that we talked about earlier that they're already exceeding those sort of expectations when it comes, but this is something that is sort of builds into these small businesses brand environment. And, and again, it's one factor of many, but one that's important. I just shared with you just so you had a chance to look at some of that demographic breakdown. Again, full piece in the report. Um, now, we did ask, of course, is, you know, how important is it to inform the community of what the small business values, what they're doing in general? And it's important and essential both for the general public and small businesses themselves. So consider that as both you work with small business owners, too. So this is the alignment of values. We just heard about some of that with Pfizer's piece. But it's also an area of exploration where to talk about, especially if you're partnering with small businesses, that the public seeks this sort of relational connection between what the business is doing, its values, and its sort of work in community too as well. So, all right. So let's, if you've been along for our journey so far in research, here's what we've learned so far, right? So high grade expectations, and they already, it's higher than what small business owners believe around the public. Uh, the second thing around actions, right? We saw using one's voice and platform voting is really high in that piece too. But point of sale tends to be an easy one, which is what we're going to talk about next. And in addition to that, while price always is going to influence one's purchasing intent, there we see that it's in social issues and participation and civic engagement in that like civic circle environment we've been talking about 
about is a way in which that individuals you know can support sm small businesses reinforces that civic circle piece that we've been discussing and then of course there's unique opportunities through product and services and point of sale that the small business owner themselves and the small business can really create more leverage around awareness and so on with issues so i mentioned earlier around you know one of the easiest ways that small businesses are telling us that they've been engaging has been around point of sale donations contributions engaging awareness of their consumers to organizations and issues through that mechanism which is really really key so I just wanted to bring it out just a little bit further for you to see a, a couple kind of things here. One is the public sees this as an easy way and it, they've been participatory in it too as well. You know, one of the things though is, is that some of the small business owners kind of told us that while they might have a monthly, a weekly or whatever, they're not always tied to some of these social issues in general. And this is probably that values alignment piece at times. So there might be some great work there and opportunities for you as as organizations to discover where small business owners' interests are and their values and alignment. Um, there's sort of this sense that we got in some of the verbatim environments, meaning that we had open-end pieces in the quant, uh, the quantitative survey to allow us to understand some of their thinking. And it's just, you know, they wanna be seen as supportive or there are issues that come up, but they would like to move more towards things that they really value too as well. So just kind of consider that uh, as well. And then lastly, there's just some, you know, just a few pieces towards the bottom here uh, overall. And again, you know, these are just some call outs for you by demographics. They're all in the larger report in general. One other thing that I would mention um, to you, and of course, let's get some of those questions in. We're gonna get to those in about a minute or two, is, is that it's very, very key our small business owners are trusted messengers. They really, really are. And what that means as a role of being a trusted messenger is utilizing their voice and platform, especially delivering information about your organization, what's happening in the social issue is a clear opportunity for them to play. Um, they also see it as an important opportunity too. And so in that role, you know, one is, is, you know, think about how you can help them be a great trusted messenger on the issues they care about, assuming that there's that alignment. Remember, we've been talking about some of the things they may not align with, broadly speaking. The other thing too is, is that small business owners, because they're local, they're frequent, you know, they, they are engaged in local community, is, is that they tend to be a place in a space of dialogue. And I think that that's an important piece when it comes to learning and also helping to contribute to broader understanding around social issues. And it doesn't necessarily always have to happen when in the sight of the small business, right? Uh, we heard earlier about you know, small business owners going to panels and being a participant and so forth, is, is that for many of you, this could be a great opportunity to engage small business owners as part of educational events and programs that you might have, rather than typical just large-scale companies that have lots of employees in general. Um, hearing their perspective might bring that new audience to you too. Uh, and then lastly is, is that, you know, there our small business owners are already engaged. They're engaged in social issues. They have viewpoints uh, too as well. Hopefully you're incorporating them into roles and positions and environments in which that they can leverage that expertise and involvement towards your organization too. And at the same time, you know, there's got to be the value alignment in the end. You know, they want to be supportive of what happens in social issues and things in the community. And also they want to work on the things that they, that matter to them and they value that relates to the business. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. They can be more of an and rather than an or. But just keep that in mind as you work with small business owners is, is that just because they're a part of the community isn't just the reason they want to be involved, maybe, is looking at ways in which their values align and where their interests lie to as well. All right. So we went through that quickly. I apologize. You know, as usual, there's so much more data that we can talk about. And I know the team at Points of Light is going to be sharing the deck and the information with you and the and the, the, the research report, but I wanted to make sure that we at least had about six or seven minutes of time together as well. So I think one of the things as we get through here, I wanna mention two pieces uh, as well here. And that is, is that as you think about your, as, as we think about how the consumer is engaged with small businesses, it means that you're being intentional to separate 
things away from this sort of broad category of corporate. I think Diane really framed it up at the onset really nicely because the immediate perception is, is that small businesses are kind of getting lumped into the larger ecosystem of corporations in general. But once we started to move that out and started to look at it separately, I think it sort of necessitates an opportunity for you to also internalize that when we talk about companies and corporations, we might have various parts of that segment. And so internally, I hope you consider what we did here in the research too as well, which is in what we heard, which is to look at small business owners separately and their involvement. Again, their big trusted messengers are highly engaged. We see that sometimes on the corporate side too, but that we don't try to create more of that one size fits all environment. So it's a really key opportunity to showcase some of the research here. Um, so in terms of what point of sale, one of the questions that are coming through and feel free to keep them coming is around, um, is around you know, what is best for small businesses to use? Candidly, we didn't get into the technology side of it and nor did the small business owners provide any of that. I will say this, um, which kind of gets to it a little bit, is, is that we heard in some of the verbatim pieces that the reason they were doing point of sale donation is because whatever system they were using for consumer purchasing had that donation capacity built in already. They didn't list the product or provider, but what they were, were clear that that made it very easy for them and something that made it you know, helpful to contribute and participate and engage. I think if I recall one verbatim, uh, one, one response said, we wanted to get going with a natural disaster and a, a piece related to COVID. We had our, um, uh, our purchase platform already had something built in by our provider. So it was an easy way to get involved. So I can't give you any recommendations on that. Unfortunately, the study didn't get in that area, but I will say, having that built into their existing platforms of consumer transactions lent itself for some participation uh, overall. Um, the report, uh, I believe that Jeff and team are going to be sharing that out if you haven't seen it already. So that will be made available. I know that they'll put that into the chat too uh, as well for you. Um, the other thing too is, is that uh, as we look at this one, it said peace and climate education, small business, what's this research show? Um, in terms of some of the social issues, and we have this in the report, the, the, the climate piece was up there, the environmental piece, uh, it wasn't as high as some of the other areas that we started to see education, um, <clears throat> food, and some of the other elements. Uh, I don't have the list in front of me, but um, peace, or maybe you're looking at in terms of climate justice um, or social justice area. Social justice was quite high too as well, um, but the climate was a little bit lower, but not too far um, from there. Um, one of the questions is around accounting for inflation. This is coming privately, so you don't see it here in general. Um, but uh, the question is around, you know, whether inflation was accounted for in the price sensitivity uh, piece environment. Yeah, so we, you know, this is a time of depends on who you hear or ask around economic conditions around inflation, broadly speaking. And, and so when we were looking at this, we were analyzing it based upon HHA, our household income uh, areas. And one of the things that we did is there are certain elements of our screeners that we provide in all of our studies to look at, have there been changes in finances? Have there been changes in spending habits, uh, broadly speaking? Um, and we sort of give them a pre-COVID, post-COVID, and then now, um, you know, where they are. So a good 24, you know, 12, 24 months environments. And then we start to ask them, do the current economic conditions, because we, we kind of don't necessarily say due to inflation, because they may or may not believe it's an inflationary environment, it just depends on viewpoints, maybe, and perception or attitudes, is due to current financial situations, you know, has it also been an influence? So we do a background screening piece just to make sure we have a mix of everybody. It doesn't mean that we're screening for you know, their knowledge set on that, but rather that we have a mix of beliefs in there that we are in an inflationary period, we're not in an inflationary period, and various levels of um, 
financial shifts or changes in personal income and spending habits in general. So that's how we account for it, uh, broadly speaking. So um, we normally will do that sort of private, you know, private environment as it kind of goes through just to make sure that we have a chance uh, that we get broad based on biased environments, because you could probably have a lot of people that will skew one way or the other. So it's more about ensuring we have participatory viewpoints from all rather than necessarily accounting for, but it is accounted for in that method and approach. Um, the other kind of question that I got DM to me too uh, is around the sample and the size of the small business owner. So one of the things around uh, the 332 small business owners that we have in there is that we were able to obviously do this with a margin of error of 5%. Um, and in addition to confidence intervals uh, for any of you researchers out there um, in the eight percentiles to 10. So um, those were all sub, uh, uh, sample sizing that was appropriate for this. Obviously, there's so much more work that can be done to understand the mindset more of small business owners, potential great super opportunity for future research. And also, since this is the first piece, you know, as I mentioned, Diane really queued it up well. This is a great piece to kind of look at in years to come, how sentiment or shifts or changes, especially as social movements and social issues happen, whether or not small businesses' uh, attitudes towards them change. So it's a great sort of benchmarking as it goes forward uh, overall. So I want to thank you for the time today. I know it was, you know, getting through lots of research can always be a little tough. Hopefully you took something away and I'll turn it back over to Jeff and I uh, appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Derek. So many great insights and takeaways and even more in the report. So encourage everyone to check that out. Um, this is a really exciting kind of first step at better understanding and unlocking the, the full potential for small businesses to impact their community and for larger organizations and companies to support their work. So on behalf of Points of Light, I wanna thank Derek and Tasha again. Um, thank all of our attendees that joined us today, encourage you to check out the full report, um, as well as our other uh, civic engagement and social impact research, which will include along with the slides and recording in a follow-up email that we'll send. Um, hope everyone has a wonderful summer and we look forward to seeing you on a future learning events. Take care.